face with Charlotte Benedict. Hello there, very good evening. Welcome to another edition of Face to Face, where we keep you up to date uh, with the latest political unfoldings here in the country. Uh, we're in the run-up to a very crucial election. Whether or not it'll be a presidential or a general election is anyone's guess. Uh, but currently, as it stands, everybody is gearing up for a presidential election. And we're in the midst of an economic crisis, so we're preparing for a presidential election while also trying to fix our economy that has hit rock bottom to discuss these matters and much more. We've got with us uh, today Dr. Harsha De Silva, parliamentarian from the Samagi Janabala uh, A very good evening, Dr. Harsha De Silva, and welcome to the show. Thanks. Good evening to you, Shana. Uh, Dr. Harsha De Silva, now, time and time again, we have topics that pop up in Sri Lanka and, and, and matters that are considered to be the talk of the town, if you will. And recently, one of the most uh, recent controversial incidents that took place in Sri Lanka was uh, this meeting that was organized by President Ranil Vikramasinghe, uh, wherein he invited the IMF and he invited uh, all members of the opposition uh, to bolster transparency, of course, with regard to the agreement with the IMF and the progress uh, on the agreement since it was signed, so on and so forth. But the opposition boycotted the meeting, uh, the SJB, the JJB, uh, many other parties that are in alliance with the SJB boycotted this. It was, in the end, only... Uh, TNA parliamentarian uh, M.A. Sumantiran, who attended the meeting. Uh, but the biggest issue here was the fact that many were alleging that you are the one who suggested that there should be a meeting with the IMF and the opposition, and the opposition should be given more of a say in these matters. Um, so what really happened there? Utter nonsense. I mean, you know, such cheap, dirty politics. You see, they want now Harsha de Silva. Everything is Harsha de Silva. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I can't live my life. I, Harsha de Silva. What, what is wrong with these people? You see, uh, either they're so disingenuous hmm. or they're dumb. Hmm. You pick which one. Because, first of all, let us understand that the deal with the IMF is done. Hmm. If somebody <clears throat> wants to undo it, and then take the uh, uh, consequences of renegotiating it. That's the thing. So, but renegotiating is possible? How, how does that work? Wait, wait, wait. That I'm talking about a deal that is done. Okay. Right? So, this deal that is done cannot be amended in any way. An addendum cannot be added. Is that what you're saying? No. A deal is done based on what is called a debt sustainability analysis. It's okay. a fiscal responsibility. Uh, you know, the government is subjected to fiscal responsibility. That's basically what it is. Okay. Governance and also independence of the central bank, no fiscal dominance of monetary policy, no printing money, etc. Right? So it's, it's based on a, and also the restructuring of uh, state-owned enterprises. Okay. Right? Now, there are certain targets to be met, certain uh, budget deficit targets to be met, hmm. certain gross financial needs to be met, etc., hmm. etc. Et there are technical things. Uh, and on the governance side, the governance diagnostic, diagnostic study has been done. Hmm. Additional conditions have been met. For instance, procurement must be now transparent. Hmm. Uh, all tax uh, breaks have to be put in the website. Hmm. Assets liabilities must be uh, made disclosed. public, disclosed yeah. in the next few months, etc., etc. Now, we have met, every time the IMF comes, we meet with them, Peter, you know, Sajid, myself, Kabir and Iran, always, uh, you know, we have a discussion. Mm. And we have told Peter directly to his face, look, we are not in agreement with these clauses. Mm. And mm. mind you, we did not vote against the IMF program. Mm. It is us who actually asked the Rajapaksa government to go to the IMF in 2020. Yes, I remember Everybody that. else opposed it. Hmm. Now, all these jokers are saying, yeah, we are willing to work with the IMF, we'll change this, we'll change that. What bloody nonsense man is this? I'm telling you because I'm irritated, hmm. right? You know, either, you know, there's no position. Hmm. If, if you are against IMF, say so. Say we are against the IMF, we have an alternative policy. Put it down. Hmm. You can't vote against it. We will make a little amendment here, little amendment there. Nonsense. I'm referring to a specific group in parliament. I don't care. I'm talking to all about all these jokers hmm. who completely vehemently opposed it. Hmm. Right? And now saying, 
no, no, we are okay with them. We have to work with them. We will work with them, right? So what I'm saying is, if they have a better alternative, put it out, show it to us. Hmm. We have said it. Our cards are out there in the open. Hmm. The uh, blueprint one, then the updated blueprint two, and hmm. we are updating the blueprint three. We'll put it out, and hmm. then nothing to hide. Hmm. We are responsible, hmm. okay? But and we have told Peter, we this we are going to amend. Hmm. We will amend these things, and it hmm. has to do with the burden on the people essentially mm. we have also shown and we have tabled in parliament for instance on the pay tax how a maximum 24 percent pay tax could have brought the expected revenue to the coffers of the government mm. right mm. nobody else has done it no mm. so we are not just talking pie in the sky mm. we are talking with facts and data and equations and numbers mm. right so please give us that credit mm. right because we are not just saying because we get on some political stage, there is some mic in front of us, we want to fool the people, so we are doing that. But this particular issue has nothing to do with the IMF. I never asked for a meeting with the IMF. Because there is no point. There is no point. Hmm. But it's done. What hmm. are we going to change with Ranil Vikram Singh uh, uh, in this uh, uh, next six months? Nothing. You think Ranil Vikram Singh is going to change the IMF agreement because we asked them to change it? We asked him to change it? No. I mean, we are not stupid. <laughs> what we said is, look, we need a discussion with the creditors because that is not yet done. Hmm. That agreement has to be signed. Hmm. We have two types of creditors. The OCC, that is the Official Creditor hmm. Committee, which is the Paris Club plus China plus India. Hmm. We have to get into an agreement on the restructure of about $12 billion or whatever it is after the interest components, hmm. Hmm. The, the what do you call the arrears have been added. Hmm. How are we going to pay? Hmm. What is the, is there a haircut? No haircut. Hmm. Right? What is the extension of the tenor? Hmm. No, what is the, uh, the, the new, new coupon going to be? Hmm. Hmm. Right? How, what is the net present value after the restructuring? Hmm. What is it? Let us see whether it is possible for us to so, do. So, so the opposition has had no say in any of these? Nothing. Now, to date. Not to date. Then there are the, the, the commercial uh, creditors, hmm. by and large, the international sovereign bondholders. Um, after the, the arrears are added, I don't know exactly how much it is. I'm thinking 15, 16 billion dollars. Hmm. Plus, then we have China uh, Development Bank, commercial hmm. credit. We hmm. have to, now, there is a discussion. Okay, hmm. They propose an MLB that is called a macro-linked bond, which I am opposed to hmm. and I don't know if the government is opposed to or not. I don't know whether the other people are opposed to or whether they care about it or not. I don't hmm. know. Hmm. And now apparently the government has proposed something else. Hmm. We don't know what it is. Hmm. But what I told Ranil Vikram Singh, the president in parliament, there is no backroom deal man. I don't need to do any backroom deal with anybody. I am a very open man. Hmm. P people see me, what you see is what you get. Hmm. Right, uh, with, I have my fun, you know, and that is when I have fun. When I work, I work very hard. Hmm. I'm, I, 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 I'm committed. Hmm. I love this country. I'm doing this not because I don't have anything else to do. Hmm. Right? I never pasted posters on some damn wall and come here. Right? Hmm. I want Colombo in a big way. Hmm. Right? I mean, people know I never put the, where the national suit to get votes, man. Hmm. I don't want to fool anybody. Hmm. If they want, they can vote for me. If they don't want, they don't have to vote for me. Hmm. It's not all about uh, winning elections hmm. or, 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 or fooling people. This is about our country, man. Hmm. This is about our country. We've got to fix this damn thing. Hmm. Right? So in that sense, what I told Ranil Vikram Singh, the president, was, and it is in the hands art, hmm. you can, or you, you can play it, it's, on the, uh, it's live TV. Hmm. What I said is, look, your, your ter term is going to end. Mm. If you sign something, we will have to be responsible to implement it mm. because we will take government in six months' time. Mm. Okay? Now, if that is going to be the case, we want to know what we are getting into. Mm. Mm. So, therefore, organize a meeting with the creditors. Mm. Now, unfortunately... The president has misinterpreted. No, president <laughs> called a meeting with the IMF. There is no reason for us to meet with the IMF with the president. Hmm. We are meeting the IMF in any case. Hmm. As a separate party? That's a separate party. We will meet them in the next few days. Sajit has given a date. Myself, Iran and Sajit. And if anybody else wants to join, I don't know. We will meet with them. Hmm. And we will carry on this conversation. Hmm. And it's a technical conversation that we're carrying on. 
showing them, look, there are thing, things we agree, things we don't agree, but they know that that that, that we are. We are, we, are, we are responsible. We, are, we didn't oppose the big program. Hmm. We said we have to do it. But these issues we don't like. So they know that we are genuine. Hmm. We, they know we are genuine. So, so besides, besides the whole you know, official agreements, um, you know, official conversations that you'll have, it's, it's important to develop this relationship with we, the IMF. We have a relationship. Hmm. And, and, and the point, Sean, is that people are saying, I wanted a meeting with the IMF. See, they are. This is cheap politics of this country. Mm. So cheap. Mm. I heard, like you said, you know, mm. they're trying to drag my name. Harsha Desai and Ranil Vikramasinghe has done a backroom deal, and he's got president to call. I, come on, man. <laughs> come on. You know, is that the level of politics that you people play, mm. or is it that you don't even understand? that the deal with the IMF is separate from the deal with the, 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 the bondholders. Today, they are asking one of their uh, 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 participants at the meeting, oh, we asked the IMF uh, what the situation is with the debt restructure. And they told us they don't know. True, no? <laughs> This is so, so, so just for context, you're speaking about the meeting with the Jataka Jana Balavegia <laughs> and the members of the IMF that was held today, of course, this morning. Of course, okay. of course. So because they don't, they, they have nothing to do with it. Mm. IMF has nothing to do with our negotiations. We have Lazards mm. and we have Clifford Chance. Mm. Okay. On the other side, they have White and Case and they have Rothschild. Mm. So Razad and Rothschild, White and Case and Clifford Chance are talking. And mm. I don't like what is happening? Mm. I think I don't know, because they should have moved this beyond this point. Mm. The every day it's tomorrow, 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 day after tomorrow, day after. It's too late. Areas are building up. Mm. Mm. Areas itself now has built up to a billion billions of dollars. Mm. Mm. You see, so uh, I so since you asked. Mm. And and you know because you know Colombo people are also saying, Harsha, what do you ask for a meeting? You didn't go. <laughs> you never asked for a meeting. I never asked for a damn meeting. <laughs> I don't need to go through the, the, them for me to meet with the IMF. Why should I? Mm. Right? I, I, we are we are the main opposition in Sri Lanka. Mm. We are going to form the next government. Mm. Right? Iran, Kabir, myself with Sajid know what to talk about mm. with them. And our position has been clear. Hmm. We are not playing a double game, please. Hmm. We say it out in the open. We hmm. don't go to the, 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 on the political platform and say, we don't need the IMF. Hmm. We have a vikalpe. What is vikalpe? It's not a question. 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 So speaking on speaking on this creditors, the, the meeting that you called for, of course, with the creditors, the official creditors, and other parties that are involved in that, you said that the process should have moved forward from this stage. Does the fact that the current president and the government doesn't really have a mandate of the general public have a bearing on the fact that these negotiations haven't moved any further? What nonsense, man! We, we you see, many governments lose their mandate in the you know after a year. Mm or two, or whatever. Hmm. We are, um, Ranil Vikramasinghe was not elected by the people, we all know that. Hmm. But constitutionally, Ranil Vikramasinghe is the president of this country. Hmm. Right? So you can't say, if he's the president of the country, he doesn't have the powers of the president. He has. No, he has the powers of the president. Yeah. I'm asking you as to, as to how far the fact that you said it's not just about you know, official agreements and uh, official signing of documents. See, that is why I'm saying mm. that it is important for all political parties to go beyond petty politics, man. Mm. Let's go beyond petty politics. Let's let's fight the election on our own platforms. Mm. But don't, you know, don't let down the country mm. for petty politics. Mm. 
So today, uh, I don't think the exclusive interview has aired yet, but uh, we did play a few parts of it uh, on, on our sister channel, Sirisa TV, today, where uh, former minister Basil Rajapaksa, uh, quite a person who is dubbed as an influential character in the SLPP, was speaking uh, with Basanta Masengi, and he expressed uh, an opinion, and he said that he is of the view that it is time for the UNP, the SLPP, and the SJB uh, to unite to develop this country. Uh, where does the SJB or, or you, what do you have to say about that? I, I, you know, I'm not going to comment on that because I don't want to be caught saying something I should not be saying. All what I'm going to tell you is I haven't watched what he has said, mm -hmm. but let me first watch it. But let me tell you what we need uh, is a, a government uh, that is uh, going to implement a program to get this country out of this mess and put it on a path of progress without crooks. Mm. Okay? Mm. Governance is key. Mm. It's, it, it's key. Mm. Right? So when you talk about system change, you know, ensuring that you create strong institutions. Mm. Right? Now, because of the IMF, mm. the, the at least transparency Mm -hmm. Right has has uh, it, it, ha, uh, sort of increased in the in the transactions within government. But has it really? Of course it has. You go now to the website mm -hmm. and click and see what the last uh, procurement was. Mm -hmm. You go and click and see in 2023 who got tax benefits. Mm -hmm. Company one, company two, company three. Mm -hmm. Then you go back and see in the last five years how many people got uh, duty free car permits. Mr. So-and-so, Dr. So-and-so, Mr. So-and-so, Professor So-and-so, name, mm. amount, mm. value, everything is given. Mm. Now, in the next few months, only 12 out of 225 have uh, published their asset declarations. Mm. The rest will have to follow, right? Mm. So, so isn't that improving transparency? No, that is. That and, is. and also, look at the last procurement. What was the procurement for? 200 uh, containers of eggs, mm. right? Who bid for those things? What was the, uh, the, 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 uh, the, who got it, etc., etc. But I am asking for further, uh, further transparency. I want to know what the bids of the other, uh, the, 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 those who didn't win the, mm -hmm. the, the, the procurement. What were they, etc., etc. So unlike in the past, Charlene, it is there. Mm -hmm. What is not working, however, is that crime continues to happen. Mm. People are still robbing. Now, for instance, I took up the case yesterday. Everybody's talking about it. They didn't make a uh, fuss at all when this continued to happen. Only partly, and I went to the uh, the, the excise department about the horror, horror sticker matter, right? Mm. Now, again, they found uh, forged uh, uh, stickers in, in certain, uh, certain districts. On, on liquor bottles. Yeah, on liquor bottles, right? Mm. And that is continuing to go. So, I heard the... Jana Balavega people saying, look, we told the IMF that the, 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 the Ford sticker is there. So do something about will you? Right? I have proposed what to do. Mm. Right? A lot of these people don't say a word in committee. Mm. Not one word. Mm. Outside, go to the microphone, act like heroes. Mm. But where is the, 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 the contribution? Hmm. Right. I am in the opposition. I don't want to be in the cabinet. I have told uh, 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 Honorable uh, Rani Vikram Singh, the president, I will not join the cabinet. But I'm doing a job of work for this country as chairman of the Public Finance Commission. Hmm. Hmm. Right. I'm not, I'm not, I, I, I'm not reneging my, my responsibility. Hmm. I'm continuing to do it. I'm showing this country that you can still work while being in the opposition. Hmm. Right. If, if I'm not able to prove that, there's no point in what I'm doing, right? Mm. So the point is, look, how do you stop that? Mm. You know, people say oh, politicians are supposed to catch rogues, mm. right? How can politicians catch rogues, man? <laughs> is my job catching rogues? Mm. No. If I bring something up, I can say, look, this is happening. And then it is the independent attorney generals or the 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 uh, what do you call the uh, prosecution office that has to go after them without political interference. And that is what the SJB is promising. Mm. We are promising not 
Sajit Premadasa, Harsha De Silva, go catch a rogue, you know. <laughs> Not that. That's what people expect us to do. Hmm. No. It is that we create a strong, independent prosecution office, hmm. which the IMF says, we shall consider it later if this current system doesn't uh, doesn't work. Doesn't when work. you say the current system, you mean the Attorney General's Department being the chief <laughs> advisor to the government and also the prosecutor. Correct. But now that they have created the independent uh, commission on anti-corruption, right? Okay. Uh, now, if that doesn't work, they are saying they have a full chapter in the diagnostics report mm. that they will have to consider because it happens in other countries creating an independent prosecutor. Office. But we are saying we are going to create an independent prosecutor. Once an independent prosecutor is created, hmm. that person, that office cannot be interfered with some political thing, right? Hmm. So you, you, you first say, okay, this fellow has robbed. Hmm. Now the, the Attorney General files a case against hmm. that fellow. Hmm. Halfway through the case, the Attorney General himself Withdraw. withdraws the case and doesn't uh, prosecute. Uh, prosecute and doesn't refile the case. Hmm. How's that? So the the fear is, uh, Dr. Harsha de Silva, not not per se on the on the criminal liability. Of course, there are people who demand for those who brought this country to this state to be held criminally liable for their actions. But it's not just a criminal liability. Let's take, for example, uh, something that happened very recently: uh, the immunoglobulin scam that still is continuing uh, to be fought out in court. Now, criminal liability is an extreme end that would uh, result in incarceration, that would result in, uh, you know, confinement of liberty or limiting of you, uh, your freedom to move about. Uh, but the, the fact that such a massive scam, and now we are learning uh, that even uh, substandard cancer medication was also procured uh, in a similar fashion using forged document. The fact that, you know, that kind of a thing happened here in Sri Lanka and a motion of no confidence was brought against uh, former Minister Kehli Rambukwella by the SJB, no less. And that motion was defeated in Parliament. And there is still a possibility that given a future government, given a future Parliament, that the SJB might, might accept these same people who voted against the motion of no confidence in a government of yours. That is a fear. So the question really is, how do you, you know, move forward? How do you uh, change the system, according to your words yourself, with these people who will continue to, you know, jump sides and, and, and play this game of Vasipila to Hoya? Yeah, I mean, those are ethics and morals. Exactly. That these people's parents forgot to inculcate in them. Hmm. I'm sorry. Hmm. I don't want to insult people's parents, hmm. but it looks like that, right? I mean, I don't know if the, you know, mass murder is not criminal, what is? <laughs> Genocide is <laughs> what it is. Yeah, that is what it is. Hmm. That is what it is, right? So, I mean, you see, like I said, it is, it is a joke. I mean, it was Sajid Premadasa who fought and fought and fought. Hmm. They laughed at him. Hmm. They insulted him hmm. because he was talking about it. And then they all said, nonsense, this man has done nothing wrong. Hmm. Now what? Hmm. Now what? Now what? See, you know, sometimes Sajip Premadas is misunderstood by people. Hmm. Today we are coming from an event, uh, the Selin Foundation, about uh, reusable pads for... Uh, you know, women and mm. girls mm. in this country. They called him Padman when he talked about it, <laughs> right? Now today, they are saying 40% uh, of the women in this country are unable to use sanitary uh, uh, hygiene the, products. I think the tax on sanitary products is about 57%. Precisely. <laughs> you know, I heard the minister saying, look, there are no taxes on locally manufactured products. Well, every uh, input is taxed. Mm. You know, it's 15% uh, VAT, 10% PAL, uh, 11, 11 rupees per kilo uh, uh, excise, 2.5% uh, 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 social security levy, etc., etc. Mm. Right? It's considered a luxury good. No, yeah, so what I'm, good. Yeah, what I'm saying is, I'm trying to, you know, construct an argument here. You know, sometimes, uh, you know, what, 
we say our hmm. party, our leader, hmm. uh, people tend to dismiss. Uh, it's not necessary. They're talking, you know, this is, hmm. this, you know, dismiss it, you know, hmm. Sajid Dasa. No. We, 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 this is thing, these are things that we care about. These are things we will do, hmm. right? And, and we will address the, 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 uh, the, uh, this particular issue and also on the, the point that we made earlier about, uh, hmm. about the independent prosecutor. Hmm. And as we, you know, the, the conversation was mainly focused on the IMF and the debt restructure. Hmm. Hmm. IMF, we have told uh, the uh, team and we are meeting them again. We will tell them again, hmm. right? Nothing to hide. Hmm. Right, and uh, on the debt restructure is where I'm really worried about, hmm. because uh, if RW goes and uh, signs an agreement, signs an agreement, and we are expected to meet the the payment dates, hmm. and if the situation is such that we are not able to do it, then we will go into a second default. Hmm. What, what you, we all recall the misery after the first default, hmm. and we all recall the misery of. Or we will continue to enjoy that over the years mm. of what happened to our hard-earned money in the EPF, mm, mm, mm. right? Including mine who worked all my life before I got into politics, you know. Mm. My EPF, everyone's EPF, your EPF, mm. most people watching this, uh, you know, sort of got got hammered. Do Dr. Harsha, just... So, so my point is, are you willing to go in for a second uh, restructure of the EPF? Mm. But Dr. Harsha, now, while it's true that you're working genuinely for the country and, and there are those who work genuinely for the country while being in the opposition, so on and so forth, there is some truth to that. But politics is also ongoing. Mm. And speaking of the election specifically, uh, there was much hype around the arrival of Basil Rajapaksa and now he's begun making statements to the media again, coming out, being the face of the mm. SLPP, if you will. And, and, and in this interview that I, I think you still haven't quite seen because it aired for the first time on, on, on news today, a few clips of it, uh, Basil Rajapaksa speaks about uh, holding a general election first. And his point that he's trying to make, and I need a response in quite a few minutes uh, because we're at the end of the program, uh, what he's saying is that the previous year we saw how the presidential election was held first and the party from which the president was elected got a resounding a victory, a two-thirds majority in parliament, and that kind of a situation is bad. So that shouldn't happen again. So instead, this time, it is wise for us as a country, if we are looking towards development, to have the general election first, which will uh, convey the true feelings of the general public at the general election, and then have a presidential election. Because otherwise, what will happen is, whoever uh, gets 50 plus one will become the president, and his party will have a massive advantage at the general election. What are your thoughts on that? Real quick though. I mean, I don't have the authority to determine. So whichever comes, <coughs> we are willing to face, right? Mm. We are going to win a general election. We are going to win the presidential election. But 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 there is a group of parliamentarians who are trying to get 113 votes to dissolve parliament. Uh, would your party uh, be in favor of that, that or that, against that, that? That I have to consult with my party because, you know, I can't speak on behalf of myself. Right? But, but what would your immediate uh, let, response let us be? See, let us see. We, we, are, we are willing. <laughs> We are, we are ready for anything. You know, forget the noise, forget the bogus polls. Mm. Right? I know polls. <laughs> Charlotte, <laughs> I know polls. <laughs> right? We created polling companies. So we know, mm. right? We know what the numbers are, mm. right? So, so, so all these uh, psyops, you know, to, to con show people, you know, bringing crowds by, you know, dozen buses from here and there mm. won't work. Hmm. Right, people are going to understand the complexity of the problem and the the solution. Hmm. You know, it is not like saying, "Look, buddy, I gave you five percent no. more, so therefore, don't ask for your money. I'm not going to pay." Where in the world does that happen? I understand, doctor. Definitely, the general public is 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 much. Uh, more smart, at least politically, than they were before uh, because they have felt the results of not voting for the proper candidates at previous elections. Uh, our only hope and prayer is that uh, we will find a proper leader for Sri Lanka and a proper parliament that will lead us towards prosperity. Thank you very much, Dr. Harsha De Silva, for joining us on our program this evening. Thank you very much to all our viewers out there. And a kind reminder for all of you to vote wisely, make an informed decision, until we meet again, take care and God bless.